<laughs> Hi everybody. This is a video about <laughs> about the impulse game. And this is one of the first things that I teach all of my clients. It teaches the dog to focus on the owner. It teaches the owner better timing. And it teaches the dog a little bit of self-control. It was introduced to me as being called the impulse game because it's supposed to teach the dog how to control their impulses. And when done correctly, it does. It teaches the dog that rather than just going for what they want, they are supposed to stop and look at you and ask for what they want. Um, but it has to be done correctly and with every dog it's sometimes it's a little different. There are some basic rules to it um, You don't give the dog what he wants until he does what you want him to do Which is to stop trying to get the tree and eventually look at you and um, But for each dog sometimes you have to change it up a little bit um, with the two dogs I'm working with today. I had to change it up a little bit with Rye because he's very um, very ADHD. He's very distracted by everything else, so it was hard to keep him to focus on me. Um, but eventually, when I he, he did, he did learn to focus to get what he wanted. Um, but this is a, a great game to play, and um, this video is being made over a couple of different sessions over a span of a few weeks, sometimes a, a week in, in between sessions with the dogs. So I may be a little redundant in things that I say. I ask you to just bear with me. Don't look at repetitions as being bad. Look at them as being good because it's a reinforcer for you as a owner slash trainer as much as it is good for the dogs to have reminders and things taught through repetition. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learn a little bit from it and uh, have a great day. Go play with your dog and play the impulse game. I, I like the impulse game because once you learn the timing and the dog gets the idea of it, the psychology that's used in this game, you can use in other areas. And um, I'll be showing you a little bit of that later on too, either in a separate video or later on in this video. I don't know. So, <laughs> you know, it's a great day outside today. So go sit outside with your dog with a, some small pieces of cheese, little tiny pieces, and, um, and play the impulse game. <laughs>
Good girl. She looked up at me, so she gets something. If she tries to go for the open hand, you don't pull it away, you just close it. Good girl. Now notice I had my hand open, but she did not try to take it. She looked at it, and she's looking up at me. Good girl. Now if she looks at me, good girl. I'm going to go ahead and take one. I'm not going to feed her from this hand. I'm going to take it from the other hand. Make her look at me. I'm going to bring the treat up to my nose. Good girl. Yes, good girl. She looked up at me, even without a treat going to my nose. Good job. Now we're going to fill my hand back up with treats. We're going to start all over again. See what she does. <laughs> that doesn't count. You don't get it if you paw it. <laughs> yes, good girl. She looked up at me. I'm going to get, let her have one. And you can't see her because she's off camera. But she's just, she's kind of looking around. Yes, she looked at me. I'm going to let her have one. Just a little bit more. You, when you put the hand out to her, if she tries to get them, just close your hand. Yes, good girl. Good girl. She was looking at me. Good girl. Good job. Good job. That's how the impulse game works. You have to get the timing. You have to get the timing right. Okay? You got to get the timing right. Don't pull your hand away. You start out with the closed hand. As soon as they stop trying to get it, you give them a piece. I always prefer giving them a piece with the other hand until they start getting good at it. Then you could take a piece out of the hand that you're offering. But don't just give them the hand that's holding the treats, the treat hand. Don't just feed them out of that hand. You should always use your other hand because I think it makes it a little bit clearer to the dog. Now you stop that. You stop that barking. She's barking at me because now she wants me to throw the ball for her. All right, so the steps are... First, the closed hand and the criteria, all they got to do is stop trying to get it. When they get good at that, you raise the criteria that now they got to look at you. You bring a treat up to your nose to make them look at you and give it to them, okay? But then, no treat in your finger. Just bring your finger up to your nose. And then they got to look at you without you going to your nose. They've just got to look at you on your own. When they get that right, then you start opening the hand. But if they go to go for it, you don't pull the hand away, you just close the hand. And then, then they've got to follow through the steps. Stop trying to get it, then they've got to look at you. And you can help them by pulling the treat back up again, but eventually they got to do it on their own. So that was really good. Now we're going to try it with Molly. Now Molly is very grabby when it comes to food. <laughs> He's very grabby. Let's see how he does with this game. Good boy. See, he stopped trying to get it. That's when he gets one. From the other hand. And if he gets distracted by a dog, that doesn't mean anything. He's got to choose to look at me. Yes! <laughs> but not be rude to the other hand. <laughs> Come here, Molly. See, he starts getting frustrated and just wants to go away. <laughs> All right, we're going to take that, even though that was really naughty. I don't want you jumping on me either. I may have to do this with him inside because he's too distracted outside. Mo. Good. He almost looked at me. Good boy. Why don't you try sitting? Why don't you try sitting? Good boy. Good boy. We're going to take that one, even though he looked away because something was walking by. We're going to take that. 
Susie's really excited. So he's not really got the idea yet, but I'm opening up the hand anyway because he's really distracted with everything outside. And I'm hoping that opening the hand will keep him more interested in this game. Good. Good. Oh, and he's off to chase somebody. <laughs> I may have to try this inside with him. Come here, Molly. Want this? Good, good. He looked up at me, but there you go. Good job. And my other hand, I have that's holding the treats, and I'm fe actually feeding him. I am holding behind my back, so they're not a distraction. Um, and there, a leaf just ran through the yard, and he's more interested in that. <laughs> Come here, mole. Don't you want this? Yes, boy. Good boy. We're going to take that. We're going to take that, even though you looked away for something else. Mo, look. Oop. 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 Yes! Yes. Yes! 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 Yes, good boy! Good job! So with him, I actually altered the game a little bit because he wasn't keeping enough attention on me like the way Rai was. So instead what I kept doing is I kept opening the hand and closing the hand, opening the hand and closing the hand. So he's like, I want it, it's there, oh, I can't get it, I can't get it, oh, I want it, it's there, I can't get it. So I kept opening and closing the hand and all of a sudden he's looking up at me. Yes, then he gets one. Opening and closing the hand, he's like, I really want it. But instead of trying to get it out of my hand, he's looking at me. And I mean, he's making eye contact with me. Rye was looking at me, but she was like looking at my face. Whereas Mole was like making eye contact. And that's what you really do want. That was, so I had altered the game just a little bit to suit Mole. But that's what dog training is all about. Sometimes you got to change the games to make it work for that dog. Not every game, not every technique works for every dog. And sometimes you got to adjust a technique to work for that dog so that was actually good but you get the idea the um the, the main gist of it is 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 they don't get what's in your hand unless they look at you they have to stop trying to get it and look at you this helps to create focus self-control i see that i want it how do i get it i look at you and the psychology of this game i use in a lot of other ways to teach a dog how to behave you just adjust the game to suit the situation. It's how I got my dog to not run outdoors, to not run out gates, not jump out of the van. I could open up my van doors. She could be loose sitting in my van. She won't jump out of that van until she's given permission. So this is how do you get that? Get this impulse game perfect, and then you start adapting it for other situations. It's brilliant. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Be blessed. Have a great day. Go play with your dog. <laughs> so that impulse game is also really, really good to teach dogs that are a little grabby when they take food from your hands to not be so grabby and learn to, to wait for permission and not just jump up and try to take it away from you. Um, and from there, you start teaching them to be a little bit more gentle, but that'll be for another video too. Just like the other things I mentioned. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that. Right. Come here. Right. Not you, Molly. Not not you. Not you. Or right, only one dog at a time. I'm gonna have to put somebody in the house. Oh, why aren't you sweet? All right. Let's see if we can get you on camera. 
Now it's been a week since you've done this. So let's see if you can remember what you're supposed to do. And it, it, here's one of the important rules of this game. You're not telling the dog anything, okay? Let me, let me re restate that. You are not telling the dog anything during this game. You do not tell them sit. You do not tell them leave it. You don't tell them anything. They have to figure out the puzzle of how to get the food. This is what works about this game. If you tell your dog all the time, sit, leave it, then they don't learn to think for themselves and make a good choice of sitting and leaving something in order to get what they want, okay? So don't tell your dog what to do. He doesn't have to sit. He doesn't have to lay down. All he has to do is not try to get the food and look at you. Two things, stop trying and look at you. You first teach the stop trying, then you teach them to look at you. But you don't tell them look, okay? You don't tell them look. You can if you want to, but I prefer you don't tell them look. They just automatically look at you. This way they learn to obey you without being told any commands to obey. They just do it because they know it's the right thing to do. Okay, all right, so let's get her back over here and try again. So she's still trying to get it. Good. She stopped trying to get it. You tell her good or yes, and that's when she gets one. Yes. 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 So she's also looking at, up at me. I did move my finger a little bit to get her to look up at me. As soon as she makes eye contact with me, yes. And she gets one. Yes. So I am moving my finger up to my nose just to kind of help her a little bit. But if she looks at me on her own, she gets a yes and gets the reward. Yes. Yes. Now I'm going to make it a little harder. This is when we raise the criteria. I'm going to open my hand. She tries to get it. I just close my hand. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm going to add here that I actually don't like feeding out of the hand that I'm using to teach them. Um, and I'm doing that today because I thought she could handle it. Usually I don't do that until the dog is really, really good at it. So I'm kind of breaking one of my own rules. I usually feed from a different hand. Um, but, <laughs> you know... <laughs> We'll see how this uh, continues. Now she's barking at me. Now that's a demand bark. If your dog demand barks for food or attention, you don't give it to them. You don't give it to them to stop them from barking because they're always going to bark at you. She has to sit and be quiet and look at me. Or at least just be quiet and look at me. She doesn't actually have to sit. Come closer so we can see you on camera. Yes. 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 Now I moved my hand just to get her paw off my hand because I don't want her pawing me. Yes. Good. Yes. She's distracted by a car going by, so wait till I have her attention. I'm going to open up my hand. Yes. Good job. 
Yes. Yes. Good girl. Give your paw. Good girl. That's why she's giving the paw. Because the hand out there she thinks means paw. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I didn't know you know the paw. Getting some more cheese. Let me try some more. So that's actually good because I don't want her to paw my hand unless I tell her paw. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Paw. Good girl. That was actually really good. Really good. Now we're going to try it with Molly. Yep, you leave that dog alone over there. Good job. Good job. So a dog's walking by and she didn't run over and go bark at. Leave it. Leave it, Rye. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Oh, you did so good. You did so good. What a good, smart girl you are. Okay, you can go. You can go. She goes, no, I want to stay with you. You've got cheese. Now, this is going to be a little hard with Mo because he's very distracted by everything going by. Leaves, trees, birds, cars, people whatever <laughs> uh, so it's gonna be a little harder to keep his attention but we're gonna try and we're gonna see if he remembers our work we did last week with the impulse game Molly good boy even a sit good job yes good boy Yes, good boy. Now if I open my hand, let's see what he does. Yes, good boy. <laughs> Yes. That doesn't count because he's looking at a car. Leave it, Mole. Mole, leave it. Leave it. Good boy. Good boy. That was to the car. Mole. Yes. Good boy. Again, that was just for the car. That has nothing to do with the impulse game right now. Taking advantage of some other life situations to help with his training. That's what training is all about. Okay, come on, let's finish this up. Mo. Yes. See, he wasn't trying to take it, but he wasn't looking at me and he was distracted by other things. So I, that doesn't count in my book. Maybe in the very beginning it does. Oh, here goes a cyclist. Leave it, Mole. Leave it. Yes, good boy. That was a good leave it training. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. Oh, what a good job that was. Yes. Yes. He's getting a little frustrated. Mo, why don't you come here and sit down? Yes. When you have his attention, he actually does better than the other dog. But getting his attention is hard because he wants to look down the street where everything else is at going on. Mo. Yes. 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 So my hand's open. You can't see his face or my hand, but my hand is open and he looks at it and looks at me. That's when he gets the yes and gets the treat. Okay.
you can go. You can go chase the birds or whatever. That actually wasn't bad. But I want to show you how you can use the impulse game to teach a dog not to run through a door. Okay, this might be a little chaotic because i got three dogs in the house. And I have to try to keep them away so that I can work with the one dog and you can see what's going on. But we'll see how it works. So we're going to try it. Mole has a tendency to jump up on the door when he wants to go out. And I don't want him to. I also don't want him to run out without permission. So this is what we're going to do. So it's hard to see what I'm doing in the video. That's another dog in the other room. Is I'm opening up the door a little bit and if he tries to scoot out, I'm just closing the door. Good. Okay, go. It was beautiful. Beautiful, nice job. So what you do is, just like with the impulse game where you open and close your hand, with the door, you have to be careful not to catch their nose or their feet or anything, so you have to be careful. But the idea is, is like with him, if he's jumping up and down, I'm, I got my hand on the doorknob and I don't do anything until he stops. And then I open up the door a little bit. And if he goes to try to run out, I close the door. And you only need to open it up this much, especially for him. I close it again and, and I keep doing that until he sits and looks at me. And then I open up the door. Again, if he gets up, I'm going to close the door. But he sits, he looks at me, I open up the door, he doesn't move, and I tell him to go. This is all how you teach a dog how to make a good choice. It's great when a dog obeys a command, sit and stay. But it's better when the dog learns, I don't run out an open door without getting permission to run out the door. It's just better. Now we're going to try it with Ryan and see what happens. Okay, go ahead. Now I didn't make her sit down. She's actually not as good at this as Mole. Mole picks it up really, really quickly. So Rye just looks at me like, I really wanna go out the door. So eventually I'm gonna work on making her sit, but for now, I'm just glad that she didn't run out the door. Let's see what my dog does. Okay. Oh, Ryan wanted to come in. That doesn't work. Ryan, you screwed up my video. You screwed up my video, you rotten doggies. Look at you crazy dogs. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> See so, yeah, how I put the treat out. And she's just holding my gaze. Just staring into my eyes, waiting for me to tell her that it's okay, take it. And I always give her a release word like okay or take it or something like that. But that's what you want. You want to put your hand out with the food in it and a dog look at you like, am I allowed to have that? Yes, here, take it. That's what you want.